And now, let me introduce you to a man. When I first read his first Tom Thorne book, I just thought this is so scarily weird. This is taking it to the end. Mark Billingham. Well, you meant it to be. This is Mark Billingham, by the way. Didn't you mean it to be? Um, I don't know whether I meant it to be scarily weird. I, I had an idea that I kind of knew was a strong hook. And when I told people about it, they kind of went, ooh. And was this the one where you were neither living nor dead, but sort of in the middle? That's right. And, I, and it's, fu it's funny, because I had the idea when I... When I delivered 30,000 words trying to get an agent and I sent that manuscript out, I put a shout line on the front of my little amateur manuscript. You know, I put, I put, he doesn't want you alive, he doesn't want you dead, he wants you somewhere in between. And a year later, that was on the side of London buses. That word for word. And to this day, I think it was essentially the fact that I came up with a good shout line that, that got me a book deal. Yeah. And Tom Thorne is still in business. Yeah, he's still going, still knocking about, miserable old bugger, but, you know. <laughs> uh, let me just go back, because when I first met you, you had recently given up the stand-up comic routine. Mm. Mm. How good were you as a stand-up? No, I was, I was a crowd-pleaser. I was a kind of, you know, I was not a hard-hitting political comic. I was not a kind of edgy comic. Um, I would just go on and just essentially cheap laughs were my business um, but you know that's what that's what people had paid to come and see um, I think I was probably the same kind of comic that I am as a writer I, I try to give the best performance that I possibly can I think writing a book is a performance I firmly believe that and yeah. it taught me a lot actually and you told me a story let's going to test it see whether Mark told me the truth when he told me this story it was only about 10 years ago you you told me a story that made you change your perception of the world? I think we were in a Manchester hotel. Ah, yeah. Yeah. What happened? I was, I was writing for television back then, and I was... Um, myself and a friend who I was writing this TV show with, we'd gone out on the town a couple of nights, and on this third night, I said, let's stay in. You come to my room, we'll, we'll watch some TV, we'll talk about the show, we got had some rewrites to do or something. So he came over, we ordered room service, beer and a pizza for a fiver, that was the deal they did. And we had the pizza and the beer and there's a knock on the door and I thought it was room service and I opened the door and there's three guys in balaclavas and I kind of remember thinking that's not room service or who's playing this joke or whatever and they came in and they beat us up and tied us up and put bags over our heads and held us hostage in there for about three hours while they ran around Manchester with our check cards and plastic and nicked everything and told us they were going to kill us and yeah it kind of changed my perception of things it made me a bit nervous about staying in hotels put it that way but it um and it also changed when I started writing that first book a year later. I think it really was informed by, by that. I, I, I wanted the victim in my book to be front and centre, you know, and not to be just a, a, a catalyst for a plot, not to just be a reason there's a story, but to be somebody that, that, that the reader cared about and got to know about. And, and I think it made me quite good at writing about what it's like to be afraid, you know, properly afraid, not, not being on a roller coaster afraid or watching a scary movie afraid, but, you know, am I going to see my wife and kids again afraid? Um, so, yeah, it was, um, in some ways, it was quite, you know, I'm almost glad I went through it. Almost. Almost. Mm. But t Tom Thorne goes on. But you also write standalone books as well. Mm. Does this mean that the ideas keep coming and some of them you just can't fit into, uh, into the box? No, I mean, no, I mean, I actually make a decision almost before I've had any kind of an idea that the next book I'm going to do is not going to be a Tom Thorne book. I have to stop. I have to take a break. I mean, it's learning from the best. It's learning from, from crime writers like Michael Connolly or, you know, people who keep, who maintain an incredible level of quality across a long-running series. And the way they do it is to step away from that series every so often and re-energy, you know, recharge their batteries, write about something else, then come back to their main character fired up again. That's the theory. I think it's a good theory. I mean, it's, you know, touch wood, it's worked for me a couple of times where I've just thought I need to step away. I've written three, three on the trot now and I need to do something else. If you start to feel you're going to write, you're writing the same book over and over again, you need to... If something is becoming formulaic, you need to change it. So I'm going to keep changing it. Uh, this sounds like a facile question, but um, are, you, are you still enjoying it? Do you still look at your computer and go, ah, oh, I'm going to have a right, great day with the computer? Um, I very much enjoy the business of writing, but that isn't necessarily always about the writing. You know, no, I don't 100% I don't enjoy sitting at my computer and writing. 
I enjoy this. I enjoy this <laughs> immensely, <laughs> immensely. No, no, I'm, I, I think that's because I'm a, I'm, you know, I come from a performance background. I'm a show-off. I'm just a shameless show-off. The book is show, writing a book is showing off to me. But, but it's work. So sometimes I just plain don't want to do it or I have a bad day or it's, I can't string a sentence together. But going to lovely festivals and talking about the books and doing all that, I absolutely adore. <laughs> uh, I, could, I couldn't do one without the other. No, I really couldn't. And I know some writers would rather have needles stuck in their eyes than do this. They're going, hang on, I'm a writer. I just want to sit in my little room on my own, never talk to anybody. Um, somebody once said to Dorothy Parker, do you enjoy writing? And she said, I enjoy having written. And I know exactly what she means. That, you know, when I've finished a book and I've done it, and now I'm, then I can just go out and show off and talk to audiences. I, I much prefer that. <laughs> it's great to see you again, Mark. Yeah, Thank thanks, you. Dave. Thank you.